Moses joins us now for a peek at sports. So the Bobcats end the month of September on a high and now look to hit the ground running in October. And one of the nicest things was they finally got those two regulation mm -hmm. wins at the AJHL Showcase, which is a nice way to go into the month of October, especially keep that momentum carrying yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be a little bit tough. Got a storm to deal with uh, in terms of Grand Prairie, that is. Mm -hmm. Matt Schumont has more in this report. Well, the month of September was anything short of a roller coaster ride. After the Bobcats needed shootouts in their first three games, they followed that up with a four-game losing streak only to close out the month with a pair of wins at the AJHL Showcase. I thought we played fairly well. I mean, we did have the ups and downs, but uh, in the end, I mean, I think we're learning what it takes to win those hockey games, grind one out here and there. And so, I mean, it was an up and down month, but overall, I think we played pretty well. I guess that breaks down to consistency, and that's our biggest concern, is we got to start playing 60 minutes the same way. And, you know, I think we're starting to, to understand what our identity is, our team identity, and the type of type of game we have to play. After struggling to find the back of the net in the first eight games, the Bobcats were able to score more than four goals in a game for the first time this year after lighting the lamp seven times against the Brooks Bandits. It was good we needed a game like that and it was going to come eventually so uh, I guess it's good we had that game and the other team scored five so um, yeah we're on a bit of a streak right now hopefully we can continue it. I think confidence wise that's huge and I mean they did a lot of good things. We competed a lot harder, we started to, to drive some of the lower seams and if we weren't getting a lane to the net we were drawing some penalties, our power play scored four goals so you know you can see signs and, and of things that we were missing. History was also made at the AJHL Showcase. With his 20 save performance, Devin Green broke the Bobcats record for most shutouts with five. I didn't even know that I was even close to that. I didn't even know that was a record or whatnot. So, I mean, obviously knowing that, it's pretty cool to have. And, I mean, I guess from here on out, just try and set the bar higher and higher. Devin's came back with just a real good attitude. He's 20 years old. He's on a mission. And, uh, you know, he's done a real good job and got the job done. So, certainly it's a credit to him. And not just the last shot out ahead, but the four prior to that. Now with all that momentum with them, the Border City Bunch will look to turn that into wins when they begin a three-game road trip with a pair of contests in Grand Prairie. And after stealing a victory in Lloyd Minster just a couple weeks ago, the Bobcats will look for a little payback against the Storm. We want to go in there. It's a big weekend. A lot of teams ahead of us are playing against each other. So, I mean, there is room for us to move up in the standings if we can pull out the four points this weekend. So, it's a big weekend. And, I mean, we've practiced hard this week, and I think we're ready. It's a nice big barn, so you got a lot of room to move, and I think that helps our team out a, a lot, especially. So, um, yeah, it's a weekend. We're trying to get at least three to four points. So, anything uh, near that, we'll be happy. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports. We'll move on from Junior A to Bantam Hockey. Starting the season with a record of 1-2, and two, the Lloydminster Foremost Heat are in unfamiliar territory. You see, last season, they only lost once, and that didn't happen until November 24th, a streak of 18 games. The team they lost to? Edmonton SSAC, who just so happened to visit the Border City this weekend. As Matt Schumont reports, the Heat know there's no better, or no better team to face to get back on track. After starting the season with a pair of losses, the foremost team were able to pick up their first victory of the season last Saturday in a thrilling game that saw the Heat chilling 4-1 to one, heading into the final 20 minutes. It was really important for the kids. Uh, they've worked really, really hard to get to this point and, and we really needed that win to feel like, you know, we can win one goal games, uh, you know, and, and be right in there till the end and, and make the magic happen towards the buzzer. So. Once again, penalties came back to haunt the Heat the following game, allowing three goals with a man down. Now taking frequent trips to the box has become a common trend. If that's going to be the case, the team is going to have to be better killing penalties. We've got to be in position for sure. I know that uh, we're working really hard on getting back and being in the right position, but then not only being in the position, but knowing what to do when we get there, making sure sticks are in the passing lanes and, and helping out our goalie with blocking a couple shots or at least keeping them to the outside from from the shooting area. So. Just get the pucks down when you have the chances to. we got to bear down and get them out of the zone. Now, it may only be three games into the year, but the Heat already see themselves five points behind the Charger division leading PAC Saints. Now, not hitting the panic button just yet, they know they're going to have to start stringing wins together if they want to keep up. These ones are huge, and, and every time that we can get it back into 500 and then go plus from there is, is going to be really key because it gives us a little bit of a moment, momentum boost and a shot in the arm for every game after that. So these ones will be huge. We got one now, so that can lead to many more, and hopefully it does. Uh, it's just uh, 
just gets the boys going, and once one comes, two comes, and it's going to be a good time. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports. Well, that is your first look at sports. Much like the clouds, the ominous Bart Padiasik has your weather details coming up. It's safe to describe the 2013-14 Rustlers women's volleyball season as, well, Jekyll and Hyde, winning first or six of their first seven matches, only to lose the following ten straight, ultimately getting bounced out of the playoffs. But as Claire Hanna explains, with a new season comes renewed optimism. For any athlete, the offseason can be a welcome time to rest and recover. But for the women's wrestlers volleyball team, they couldn't be happier to get back in the gym after a long summer. I'm super excited. It's like all summer I've been just like waiting and ready to get back on the court and see what this year is going to bring. We have lots of great recruits coming in and I'm just like really excited. You work all summer. You look forward to your summer when you're playing here, but then when summer starts, you're like, I just want to be back in the gym. So it's awesome to be back and have a new group of girls to train with. Last year, the wrestlers beat Lethbridge College to make it to the provincial championship, but fell short to Red Deer. It was an up and down year for us. Uh, we went through, we were pretty streaky and, and uh, I think we did all right. Um, but this year, obviously, the bar is going to be set quite a bit higher. The ACAC conference is one of the toughest in the country. The Canadian College Athletic Association currently places the Red Deer College Queens and the Grand Prairie Wolves in the number one and two spots in the country. If the Lady Rustlers want a berth in the prestigious national championship tournament, they'll have to be in one of these positions. <laughs> No, our goals is kind of like we always like want to take one point at a time, one game at a time. But um, we want to make it to provincials, medal provincials, and top two, and hopefully get to nationals with that. The team has four first years, but the rest are veterans. With the season opener coming up in just two weeks, Coach Dyer will be looking to the whole squad to contribute. Some of our vets for sure are going to be going to be looked at to, to, to do some, some serious jobs for us. We're going to be relying, I think, on everybody basically to, to be able to do a job as we have quite a bit of depth on our team and people that can do a, a number of different things. And so hopefully we can all work together to make sure that uh, we're going to get where we want to go. Claire Hanna, Newcap Sports. Those lady wrestlers will face that top team in Grand Prairie at Lakeland Gym beginning at 8 o'clock. In the meantime... We are going to move on to the men's wrestlers team. They head off to Edmonton for three games in two nights starting tonight in some preseason action against Concordia, Nate and Kings College. A tune up against some teams they'll face in their division. Yes, the ACAC is now going back to the two division format unlike the last few seasons, meaning there's a greater chance for the wrestlers to make the playoffs. We want to finish top two, uh, get ourselves to, to playoffs and a straight berth into uh, conference championships. Uh, and then we said we want to try and medal there and see then uh, we win that first match uh, of conference championships. You never know what can happen. Concordia, Nate, and I think we're playing Kings as well. They're actually in our league. Prior to us, not so much. And they what, got second at nationals last year. So they're they're definitely higher caliber than but us. But this weekend, yeah, it's going to be a I good overlook as to what we have for basically competition in our league. Uh, McEwen's out, they've moved to CIS, so uh, that's a real strong competitive team in the north that we lose. Uh, but then we get gain Augustana, so uh, they're going to be a tough team. Uh, they were last year, um, but it's going to be a dogfight. Uh, we play everybody four times in the north, uh, so some good rivalries will probably come about with that, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Moving on to high school volleyball, the Neil Mantic Invitational Tournament got underway this afternoon, and no better way to start the event than an all Lloydminster clash. The host Lloyd Comp Barons took on the Holy Rosary Raiders. Moving to the first set, Barons up 23-18. Lexi Robinson's float serve, just a little too much to handle, setting up set point, where the Raiders on set receive, well, just put it into their side of the net. Barons do take the first set to the second. Raiders trying to keep it close. Emma Riche with enough spin off the block. Holy Rosary trailing 23-17. Now, to match point, Ali Wouters with the kill seals the straight sets victory. 25-18, 25-18 for the comp. Tonight at the Civic Center, some Junior B hockey for you. The Lloydminster Bandits aim for their first victory of the new season when they host the Frog Lake T-Birds. Puck drop is at 7.30. And that's all the time we have in sports. We'll have more new cap news and weather for you after the break.